H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video of H2K Infosys. In our quest for code Java, we'll see the usage of collection API in terms of certain examples of it. And we'll see how do we implement it. So the first thing that we are going to see is in terms of the example of collection API is the list interface. So we already have the Eclipse opened. So I'll open up Eclipse now. So I'll create a new session or new project called as session 35 as the project name click on next and click on finish and say no to the perspective change or the theme change so in this particular project I'll create a new package called as the list interface In this particular package, I'm going to create a class called as the list class. So this is nothing but a representation of the topic that I'm taking. So I'll call the main method, click on finish. So now we know that list is nothing but uh, interface which is inheriting the collection interface so if we want to represent a group of individual objects as a single entity where we have or allow duplications of data and we have some indexing preserved we use list interface in other words we say that list interface supports duplication of data and it supports indexing so if it supports indexing it is basically indexing will start from zero so let us create a list interface so list l is equal to uh, now the class which inherits the list interface is a list class or a linked list class other classes are also part of your list interface so we'll make it equal to an object of the array list class let now we got to import the list interface from the utility package and also the array list class which is also part of the utility package uh, then uh, how to now list interface is part of your collection framework so collection basically is nothing but which allows dynamic data structure that means we can keep on adding data to it or we can keep on subtracting data to it it is not like an array array will have fixed data based on the element size in list in your collection framework there's no element size and that is why it supports dynamic data structure similarly since list interface is part of the collection framework it will allow dynamic data structures so how do you did add data so if you want to add data we have to use a method called as a method of the list interface called as the add method so we'll see that how we can use the add data and after adding data, we will also see what is the size of the of this list where this list will contain list of data. So add add is the method used and we can keep on adding data. The data can be homogeneous data or heterogeneous data. Homogeneous data means data of same kind. So if we have homogeneous data of string type, that means it has all string type of data. Heterogeneous data means a col a different types of data. It can be string long double integer boolean character etc so let's say at this point of time adding a string data let's say uh, sam so i can keep on adding data to it so l dot add 
Mendes. So that means there are two datas added to this list out here. Okay, now if you want to uh, look at the size of this particular list, now how do I understand that it will have a size method because list supports indexing. So indexing will start from zero. So obviously it will have a size. Indexing will be having a size. In arrays we have length. Similarly, in list interface we have a method called size which will give you the size of the list. So if you want to get the size of the list, so what do you need to do? We have to use CISO statement. And L is the reference variable of the list interface, which is pinpointing towards the object of the array list class. Array list class implements the list interface. That's the way you can create an object like that and reference it with the reference variable of the list interface. So L dot size. This will be the size of the list right now. Now the size of the list right now is two, because we have added only two datas. Now if you see there is a orange underline out here. The orange underline is coming because it will the compiler is asking what is this list containing this list at this point of time is containing string so if you just hover your mouse and choose the option to add type arguments automatically it will create a list of strings similarly in the array list class also object hover your mouse over that orange underline and select the option of add type arguments out here this is also a, a, a list of strings the moment we do that the red and uh, the orange underline goes now if we get the size by running the class file we we'll see the size is equal to 2 Let us wait for the console result to come. <clears throat> Save the class file. And see we see the size of the list interface or size of the list is 2. Now if we add data to it. So list interface is part of collection framework and collection support dynamic data structures. So we can add data or subtract data. So L dot add and we can add one more name let's say Peter now if we right now run the size method of the list interface it will show me the size of this list is 3 to so save the class file and run it so we see 3 out here that means we can add data and we can subtract data so if we let's say comment this particular data obviously the size will become 2 right now and if we run the class file we'll see the size is equal to 2 okay now <clears throat> how do we retrieve data that means how do we get the data that we have added how do we get it in the console of eclipse so what we need to do is that to print data in the console so what we need to do is that we have to use the get method out here so l dot get get the data at index number so index number obviously now this is the first data added and since the list interface supports indexing so the indexing will start at zero that means index number for sam will be number will be 0 similarly for for Mendes the index number will be 1 for Peter the index number will be 2 so let's say I want to get the data at index number 0 so this should give me the value of Sam so what I will do is that I will use a differentiator uh, sys out with a star and run the class file after saving it so you see Sam is coming similarly let's say I want to get the data at uh, index number 2 so just we'll write down sys out l dot get index number get the data index number 2 
so this should give me the result of Peter so if you save the class file and run it you'll get the data of Peter now let's say I want to get the data so I want to get data sys out let me first create a differentiator okay I want to get the data to get all data now since uh, list interface supports indexing so indexing will start with zero and uh, obviously we can use a for loop for getting the data in the list interface so get all the data in the list interface we can use the for loop so for mm, the index number will be represented let's say by a and the index number starts with zero and this index number a should be less than this should be less than the size of the list and the size of the list is given by the size method so l dot size so that what do you mean by this why this condition is given this condition is given because of the fact that the number of data or rather the index number of the data should be less than the size of the list so if the size of the list is right now 3 indexing will start at 0 and end at 2 so indexing is one number less than the size that is why this condition is given and then we can increment the index number by a plus plus and then we can have a scissor statement stating that you need to get l dot get index get the data at index number represented by a this will give me all the data present in the list interface so save this class file and run it I'm getting all the data so similarly if I add one more data to it so let's say l dot add and I add the data as let's say <coughs> Harry now this will have index number 3 And if you give the get of the size right now, the size will be 4. Where the index number of the data will start at 1 and end at 3. And if I run this for loop right now, it will give me all the data present in the list interface. This is, list is a list of strings. So we get all the data out here. This is a list of strings. Similarly, I can create something like this. I'll create a differentiator first. We can create an object of the array list. And represent it by the reference variable of the array list class only. Array list A, for example. And let's say I want to <coughs> have this list. Uh, consisting of integers so first of all we need to add data to array list how do we add data data adding remains same so we have to use the add method and the array list class is implementing the list interface so it can use the methods of the list interface so l a dot add and i want to add now integers so how do we add integers let's say 20 similarly I can add I can add three datas this will be 30 and let's say this is 40 so index number of this of 20 will be 0 and index number of 30 will be 1 and index number of 40 will be 2 now if you see there's an orange underline now this is an array list of integers okay now as we have seen in our theoretical concept collection does not support primitive data so I cannot create a list array list of integer like this int this is primitive data similarly out here I cannot write down this is an array list of integers 
Now this int is nothing but a primitive data type or data structure. Array list or rather the collection supports object data. That means the integer has an a uh, wrapper class called as the integer wrapper class. Okay, so if you only write down int, that means you are basically trying to represent this array list with the primitive data structure. And primitive data structures are not allowed in collection framework. So it allows to have object data structures. An integer is a wrapper class which is part of the object data structure. So I can write down array list of integer like this. This will be supported because this integer with a capital I is nothing but a wrapper class which is nothing but an object data structure and object data structures are supported by the collection framework and the once you do that the red and the orange underline goes this is how we add data which are of integer type and let's say I want to get all data from the array list so what we can do is that we can just copy this for copy and paste it out here and the only thing I have used array uh, a out here the reference variable of the array list so I have to change it to b b should be less than a dot size and then b plus plus this should be b dot get of a dot get of b the size of this array list will be how much if you want to get the size what we need to do is that to get the size the same thing what we need to do is use this is out statement and a dot so this is b right now this is a reference variable of the array list is a dot size this will give me the the field array list okay what i will do is that array i have already used integer a so I'll call this as arr. So arr dot add arr dot size. So that to remove confusion. Now we'll get the size. After that, I will use a CISO statement and a differentiator with the star. The size is right now will be three for the array list of integers, and this is nothing but your the data in the array list 20, 30, and 40. So if we, for example, I'll comment this data, the size will become two. And based on that, the for loop will show you, or will throw rather two data. So let me uncomment it. And so this is nothing but this list is a list of homogeneous data. That is all strings. This array list is a array list of homogeneous data. That is nothing but integer. I can have a, a heterogeneous data in the collection supports heterogeneous data so you can have a list interface I'll just copy it okay, I'll represent it by L1 okay and I'll remove this heterogeneous data it will be it's a combination of data so you can have something like to add data so we can use the same add method so l1 dot add and let's say I add a string called let's say sam this will automatically have the index number as zero 
then we have l1 dot add and we can give the age so age will be in integer format so let's say 20 and index number will be 1 for this so this is a complete example of heterogeneous data and if you see there is a red and uh, orange underline out here so if you hover your mouse and add the argument type so put the it will basically put a comparable argument so this is a list of comparable and uh, suppress it by the suppress warning the warning will go and what we can do is that right now if you want to get the size of it so size will be used by l1 dot size the size will be 2 right now so if you save the class file and run it i'll get it as 2 this 2 so what i can do is also use a differentiator differentiate the answers and then I want to get all the data to get all data to so control C and the whole thing I'll copy it a differentiator followed by the so this is represented by L1 so L1 dot size B plus plus L1 dot get this will give me the data is present in this particular list this size will be equal to 2 and this is how we will get the result in the console of Eclipse Sam and 20 so that is how you can basically see that list is interface is part of a collection framework and collection framework supports your heterogeneous data so this is all about the list interface